Even though I do enjoy starting up Sims 4 with a goal in mind, and do have fun doing that, it is always abundantly clear that I'm the decider. I'm in control. I guess you could say I'm pretty much a minor god. I control every aspect of a sim's life, and even the lives of those around my sim. I could see sometimes enjoying this, were it some setting that I could toggle to stop all random events from occurring, but instead it's the only state the game offers on its own. This is the unsalted mashed potatoes of gaming, you add the spice on your own. It's a dollhouse to the extreme, and I feel like some kind of sociopath just like my sims. Everyone is used by me for my needs. If my sim needs social, I can invite anyone over so long as it's not too late. If their pre-existing career isn't scheduled, I'll have no trouble finding some company for my sim. I'm in control to the point that nothing can stop me. I can strip them away from their loved ones and move them in within a day or two of meeting. I don't even need to go to manage worlds. There are all these levels to relationships like enemies with benefits or lovebirds, but they don't matter because there isn't any getting to know you phase, no build up to the wedding. Even if that Sims married, I can get them to become my Sims husband or wife. For this reason, there isn't any reason to shop for my sim a spouse. I just pick whoever I like. There's no reason to find someone he'd be happy with. Whoever I want to fill that slot in his life will fill that slot. It's my imaginary land after all, and even a marriage cannot be an unmovable force blocking my desire as a player. Sure, there's a bump in the relationship you need with married sims, but it's overcome with a few more random socials. Doesn't matter if it's Brighton Day or enthuse about iambic pentameter, you're mine. Would you happen to be a mermaid? The game offers a dating system, sort of. But if a married sim will come over to do the nasty and marry me in a day or two, what point is there to going on a date? I'd like my sim to fail to woo some girl he likes and be sad about that. I like him to be attracted to someone in the first place. It's a great way to make use of the existing body types. Maybe sims have a type, both physical and certain categories of traits that get them excited to be with someone. I want hot singles in my area looking for love and also some who are not looking for anything serious right now. Especially with my sim. Sims will sometimes say no to a proposal, but five socials later you can get a yes out of them. I've literally badgered someone into a marriage. This should not go well, but it does. It always goes well. It is really not likely, and perhaps totally impossible, to end up in a divorce you didn't initiate. Oh, I know some people wouldn't like that and want things to be peachy and perfect sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes I want that, but other times I'd like to find out my sim's wife hasn't been faithful and wants to leave me. Are you kidding me? Oh, pancakes! Imagine your sim is a slob and leaves plates everywhere with a neat sim as their spouse. They don't blame you for the nastiness, they blame the plates. This is a relationship that should have some issues, but instead it's all the plates fault. Your sim and her husband never go out anymore or do anything together, and this never becomes a point of contention in the relationship. They might get angry if you flirt outside marriage, but it's not a big deal. Sims is perhaps the most inclusive game ever, as any sim can be with anyone else. But it is somewhat immersion breaking and contributes to this situation. I have the power to turn gay sims straight and straight sims gay because even on the macro level they lack preferences and I have to decide. Not only my choices, but the choices of everyone. It's a lot of responsibility and I'm really not up to the job. Even though I've done YouTube for a year now, you wouldn't be surprised to find out that I'm really not a very creative person. I mean, I guess you could say I've dabbled in the arts. But I'm not hiding my lack of creativity at all. Carl's Sim Guides? I mean, come on, I couldn't even come up with a name. I might be able to pull together a good script sometimes, but I'm no storyteller. I like to think my calling is in writing technical manuals for VCR repair. Anyway, despite the fact I'm not into weaving intricate stories, Sims 4 expects me to make drama on my own. 
use my imagination, and then, knowing full well the outcome I'm going for, enjoy that drama as it unfolds. That's really where the problem lies. I am both the creator and viewer of these stories. It's kind of like going into Game of Thrones knowing how everything ends while you're in season two. Thankfully, I do have the luxury of sharing what happens to my sims sometimes. The random stuff I slip into my videos to make them as odd as I am, which makes it a little more worthwhile. I'd say that to some extent, this desire to share the story you've weaved is why the sims players still love to share their stories. There are thousands of blogs and forum threads out there, even on my own site. Even if it's not ideal, it can be fun, especially when I make goofy situations like moving Vlad into my home and having my sims woohoo in their one room house during their wedding party, which then forces him outside where he dies. Then everyone's crying at my wedding, but I plead with death and get him back. But then woohoo again and he dies again. <laughs> But in part, it's less funny because I made it happen. As I mentioned, I'm not a very good person to be God. I make bad choices for everyone around me. But, but Vlad dying this way is just some kind of expected rudimentary AI behavior. The idea that he'd even try to go outside to get away is odd when faced with the only thing that can kill him. Being an immortal, averse to the sun, wouldn't Vlad be like, nah, if you're going to do it, I'm going to stick around and watch. I'm going to watch because I am not going out like this. That sounds just like Vlad. <laughs> I mean, cover your eyes, Vlad. Turn into a bat and hide in the cabinet or something. Nope. He acts just like all the others despite being a vampire, and I knew it could happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I got a chuckle when he died, of course, but it'd be funnier if this weren't some predictable thing. I mean, I got it to happen twice. Being in control over everything all the time, it, it kind of sucks. If I want Bella and Mortimer Goth to have a kid, I need to take over the house and get them in the mood to make a baby and, you know, do the deed. I guess I could leave after doing it, but I literally have to go from household to household making babies. I have to motivate to do this, and I just can't. I have to want them to badly enough, and I frankly don't care enough to do it. But I do care that it feels the same because of the lack of that. And if I want this to change again, I have to exert control. I have no desire to get into making pre-made save games to drop in and play. It's making me the one in control of literally everything. I can't be alone in thinking it'd be interesting to see some kid at random and find out my sim son is friends with this new offspring of Bella and Mortimer Goth that doesn't exist in anyone else's game. And Mortimer has since passed but left a legacy of poorly dressed towny Goths. While I play my own sim, I think that the only thing NPCs actually do is age up, and only if that setting is on. They don't get promotions, they don't seem to gain skill levels, don't make money and further themselves or grow or change in any way. If I turn aging on, all those old guard sims will eventually be gone to be replaced entirely by townies, not the offspring of those original families. Eventually, it'll be townies as far as the eye can see, as the game gradually puts them into houses. If my sim makes friends with teens and we all age up together, those sims will never form relationships over time unless I do what us gods do and invite them to hang out. This doesn't just fail to happen on the positive side, only a hothead you see repeatedly in public is going to make enemies in 4 because while time is passing when you're at home nothing is really happening behind the scene. The time just stops. The story only advances under my watch. People in real life hate each other. But sims only find themselves there if the dice roll calls for a fight. When your sim does end up in a fight, they look like a psychopath. If they happen to be happy, they'll do the stupid chuckle while talking to someone who just insulted their mother. Or they might act all flirty after this, which is frankly even worse. My sim has no wants that are not ultimately decided by me. 
I fully realize that in a way, all I'm doing is describing the void created by the lack of story progression in Sims 4. Deaderpool's MC Command Center and the fact they have a huge support base is evidence there is still a desire for these things. It's an incredibly deep, complex, and customizable mod, but at least some of what I ascribe should be base game features. It's a live sim, so let's simulate lives for everyone. Any solutions that did come along should be highly configurable in my opinion. I wouldn't want Sims having too many babies and it would be nice to adjust how frequently any drama occurs. This is something that's very easy to incorporate with simple toggles and sliders. But as an overall concept, this is probably much, much harder to implement at this phase than I'd like, and there definitely are a lot of other priorities. Gameplay needs depth in general across the board, and players are asking for it. I hope you guys voted for traits to be improved. Yes, that's right, we got to vote. Thankfully, EA has asked us what our priorities are in a recent survey. Maybe now that we're done bugging them for specific expansions, we can get on to what I've really wanted so long. Packs and boost to the base game experience that adds this depth. I think some of these ideas being really well done could be worth paying for, but ultimately it should be a base game thing in my eyes. In the meantime, what mods do you use to overcome these issues? I know very well I'm not alone in feeling this way, and I'm aware of some story progression in MC Command Center and relationship preferences and attraction system that are a part of Wicked Whims. I'd love to cover that, but need to set it up to be a lot more YouTube friendly. That's a community guideline strike waiting to happen. If you don't use mods, share some tips for making things more diverse for players like yourself or who are playing on console. Not everyone has the luxury of even using mods, and some would be averse to wicked whims no matter how awesome its systems may be. I love The Sims, so the reaction to me saying all this shouldn't be, well play another game. The Sims is unique in what it offers, and I am able to relax and enjoy playing it sometimes. But the problems highlighted here and elsewhere on my channel are the issues that keep me from fully enjoying it. I have high hopes that improvements are coming, and I'd put a traits overhaul and some kind of preferences system high on my list. To be clear, nothing happened to really inspire this. I mean, I've been playing recently in various areas. I, I just felt like venting on a whim and thought it might make a decent essay topic. If you like what I do, hit the bell to be notified of my videos. If you love the channel, you can support it on Patreon or just watch more videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.